let us take a brief recap of uh, what we have learned so far. Uh, we have looked at uh, thermodynamics, uh, we have looked at the uh, laws of thermodynamics, uh, mainly the first and the second law and uh, the third law was um, actually about uh, you know the lower uh, bound or lower limit of entropy of a given system and um, we have uh, looked at various uh, implications of the laws on different systems and how do we calculate uh, this thermodynamic parameters, equilibrium parameters. And then uh, we have started talking about um, uh, statistical mechanics to understand the internal structure of a system so as to get these uh, equilibrium parameters. And uh, first we have done the microcanonical ensemble and uh, then we have uh, introduced the canonical ensemble and uh, we are presently uh, doing the canonical ensemble. So, uh, for today uh, the topics that we are going to cover uh, is a general uh, discussion about the distribution and uh, what I mean by the distribution is this uh, P r is equal to uh, exponential minus uh, beta E r divided by uh, sum over r e to the power minus beta E r and also the partition function which is written as sum over r e to the power minus beta E r. And this I have emphasized that uh, this uh, calculation of the partition function for a given system holds the key to a number of thermodynamic parameters which we are eventually interested in. So, we will have to calculate this partition function which means we have to calculate this sum and uh, how to calculate this sum and in a closed form particularly uh, that is something that we are going to discuss. Okay. Uh, we will also talk about the energy fluctuations in the canonical ensemble and this is going to reveal a very important thing that why statistical mechanics works so well for large number of particles or large number of systems under consideration. Uh, we will talk about the entropy uh, in this canonical uh, sense and then uh, we will do a number of examples of the canonical ensemble or rather applications um, of this ensemble and get various physical quantities or measurable quantities. So, uh, to begin with uh, let us uh, discuss more on the distribution, the canonical distribution which is called as the Boltzmann uh, weight or uh, what we have discussed as what is the probability that our system occupies an energy level E r and which is given by exponential minus beta E r divided by sum over r exponential minus beta E r, uh, beta is nothing but 1 over k t that is the inverse temperature. Okay. So, this we have written as uh, 1 over z e to the power minus beta E r where z denotes the partition function and here uh, we will call it a canonical partition function because we are doing a canonical uh, ensemble which means that our system is in contact with a heat bath and um, eventually uh, the system comes to an equilibrium uh, temperature T uh, which is the same temperature of the bath and the system and uh, the system is not allowed to exchange uh, particles with the bath but only energy such that it comes to an equilibrium temperature. Okay. Um, so, uh, this uh, the limiting case if we take if E is a continuous variable which means that uh, even if the energy levels are discontinuous we um, assume that the uh, they are too close to each other and can be uh, considered as a continuous variable then uh, we can write this uh, distribution uh, P E D E. Now, we are not uh, using this E R because we are using E as a variable a continuous variable and we want to ask this question what is the probability for uh, we find our system between a E and E plus D E which is given by P E D E and this is proportional to um, the the distribution which is minus beta E 
and it is multiplied by the density of states. Now, this is being introduced for the first time. Let me tell you what is uh, density of states. So, G E is called as the density of states or in short we will call it as a DOS. So, uh, first if we convert a sum into an integral, a discrete sum into an integral, we should always um, in the integrand we should always uh, include this density of states because this density of states may actually vary uh, uh, depending on energy. As you see that is written as uh, G of E is written as uh, uh, it is a function of E. Okay. And uh, so, uh, so, this P E D E that is the probability of finding the system between E and E plus D E is given by this Boltzmann uh, weight which is uh, so this is the Boltzmann weight or Boltzmann factor let us call it as and this is density of states. Okay. And uh, how do we calculate density of states uh, say for a given simple system and uh, let us uh, do that uh, which we will need anyway uh, for later use. Uh, we are considering that we have a k space. So, we go to the k space representation where it is easier to visualize. So, if you have um, uh, in a k space we know that if we um, move a distance 2 pi over L uh, we get 1 k point. So, which means that the k points are separated by 2 pi over L where L is some uh, length of the system. Okay. So, if we move unit distance then we get a L over 2 pi k points. Okay. If you move a distance d k that is you want to find out how many uh, k points are there between k and k plus d k then we will get L over 2 pi into d k number of k points and this is the density of states which we call as g k d k okay? and we will convert it into g e d e by using the dispersion for a given system. Now, this is in 1 d if you think that uh, you want to calculate the number of states uh, between um, a sphere of radius k and k plus d k. So, you want to calculate the number of points here, okay, k points here. So, we will multiply it by uh, instead of this uh, uh, d k, we will multiply it by 4 pi k square uh, d k and uh, then this becomes a volume. So, uh, this number of k points uh, is equal to uh, so uh, L over 2 pi whole cube because now we are in 3D and we have to multiply it by k square d k. Okay. So, this is simply equal to V over 2 pi whole cube and a 4 pi k square d k. So, this we call it as g k d k okay? and then uh, we will simply use the dispersion relation uh, which is dependent on a given problem. So, let us come to this from here let us go here and let us see that um, uh, suppose we take a, a non relativistic uh, dispersion parabolic dispersion then E equal to uh, h cross square k square by 2 m and uh, we can calculate. Uh, so, k square is equal to 2 m E by h cross square. So, we get a k square here and now we have to get a d k. So, this is a 2 k d k is equal to 2 m by h cross square d E. So, uh, d k is equal to uh, this 2 will cancel and we get a 2 m uh, not 2 m just m by h cross square and a d e divided by a k and k is nothing but root over 2 m e by h cross. So, d k is equal to m by h cross square d e divided by uh, root over 2 m e and 
by h cross so h cross will go up and 1 h cross will cancel and now we got a k square as well as uh, dk. So, we can write this down here uh, g e d e for this three dimensional non relativistic dispersion as uh, v over 2 pi whole cube 4 pi k square is 2 m e by h cross square and then it is uh, m over h cross um, and 1 over root over 2 m e and there is a d e uh, there as well. So, this is a d e. Okay. So, uh, this root over 2 m e uh, makes it root over 2 m e here. So, this actually goes as apart from all these constant factor it goes as e to the power half. So, it depends on energy. In certain cases, it may not depend upon energy, but that is uh, uh, besides the point. In most of the cases, it depends on energy and in this particular simple case, um, we have shown that it depends on the energy as the square root of E. In fact, uh, uh, in uh, 3D, it is uh, square root of E, in um, 2D, it is a constant and in 1D for this parabolic dispersion it is 1 by uh, root over of e which it means e to the power minus half. Uh, we will see uh, some of them as we go along. All right, So, uh, this is the density of state. So, once again we write this thing which we have started with. So, p e d e in a continuum notation we should not uh, we can write it as equal to with some constant, but let us just continue with this exponential minus uh, beta e. Uh, g of e and d e. Okay. Now, uh, notice one thing this one is actually a decreasing function of e. And this one is a monotonic function, it is uh, usually uh, it could be a growing function in this at least in this particular case the e to the power half it is like a growing function, um, it is like a function that grows like this. So, let us just write it as a growing function, it could be a constant as well. Um, or at least uh, it is act uh, nevertheless it is basically a smooth function or a well behaved function. Okay. Uh, it may have divergences in certain uh, uh, conditions or in certain situations, but uh, let us not uh, talk about that at this moment. So, what we can do is that um, uh, if this is uh, like a convolution of two functions as you can see. Uh, exponential minus beta e is one function and g of e is another function. Uh, so, uh, one of them is decreasing um, monotonically going down and the other is say monotonically going up. There must be uh, some uh, energy uh, for which this uh, the derivative of this function or this this function has an extremum value. Okay. So, what I mean to say is that for some uh, e, uh, let us call it as e star say uh, this p e must be having an extremum. Okay. So, uh, what I mean by that is, uh, so if you have that to be true, then we have this exponential minus beta e uh, g of e uh, this at e equal to e star this is equal to 0. That is what the extremum means that you take a, a, a derivative and this derivative vanishes at that particular value. So, uh, let us uh, try to take this derivative, it is the two functions, so use the chain rule. So, we will have a g of e uh, minus beta into e to the power minus beta e uh, plus e to the power minus beta e uh, d g e uh, d e 
and the whole thing uh, at e equal to e star has to vanish. Okay. So, uh, if we uh, divide the entire expression by uh, e to the power minus beta e g of e that is the uh, basically the p e which is which cannot be equal to 0. So, uh, this g e goes away and the exponential minus beta uh, goes away and then we get a minus beta and a plus 1 over g of e. Uh, d g d e and this whole thing at e equal to e star is equal to 0. So, divide by all right. So, uh, this is simple uh, we are just trying to get at some uh, inference from here and uh, this tells you that uh, if we perform this uh, or rather simplify this uh, just take the beta to the other side and then what we get is that uh, del del e uh, of log of g of e uh, at evaluated at e equal to some e star uh, which minimizes this function is equal to beta and recognize that s is equal to uh, k log uh, g of e. Okay. Uh, since, I have we have written it as a log of the number of microstates and this microstates should scale as the density of states uh, that is the number of states that are there in some interval d e and e plus d. But still let me write it as uh, just a sort of relation that it goes as this and hence um, this log of g can be replaced by uh, in the top line can be replaced by s and we get a del s del e um, at e star e equal to e star um, and let us call this e star to be equal to some u uh, some energy. Uh, this is at t which is nothing but equal to k b beta. Okay. So, uh, that tells you that um, this distribution or rather this uh, uh, the definition of uh, temperature actually occurs or rather this, uh, uh, this uh, distribution has an extremum at a given value of E which is E star and if you really recognize that this is the definition of temperature or thermodynamic temperature which is T is equal to inverse of del S del E uh, where E uh, actually or here the E star represents the, uh, the internal energy of the system and this U actually correspond to the um, average energy. So, uh, this is a U is the average energy which we have calculated it which is that uh, you know uh, this E of R and uh, this we have calculated and this we have called as u or you know you can divide it by the number of particles and and call this as say uh, small u and so on which is energy per particle or in the internal energy per particle. So, this is the average energy uh, u is the average energy and um, E star is the most probable energy. Now, this is an important result. It tells you that uh, the average energy becomes equal to the most probable energy, which also tells you that the distribution is very sharp. The distribution is peaked at the average energy, sharply peaked at the average energy or which is also the most probable energy. Okay. And uh, this uh, tells you that this uh, canonical ensemble or canonical distribution is not too different than micro canonical. Now, this is a 
quite an important statement. It also justifies that why we are you know shifting from one uh, distribution to another distribution, one ensemble to another ensemble and uh, there is nothing um, so very different about all these ensembles. Uh, in a micro canonical ensemble you wanted to calculate the number of microstates uh, at an energy E or at best between an energy E and E plus D where D is much much smaller than E which means that almost in a very thin shell of energy you wanted to calculate the number of microstates and from the number of microstates you uh, wanted to calculate the entropy and various other things. In uh, the canonical distribution you say that let us um, relax this condition that uh, because energy is anyway not a measurable quantity. So, let us say that the energy is being exchanged between uh, the system and the surroundings or the heat bath or other members of the ensemble and hence come to an equilibrium. But however, that gives you a distribution which is very sharply peaked and uh, where the most probable value for uh, energy of that distribution is same as the average value. And uh, how we make that statement is through this expression or through this equation which tells you that uh, you know you get a 1 over t as the definition uh, from del s del e and that occurs at e equal to e star which we know as the average energy. So, e equal to e star equal to u is where we get a proper thermodynamic definition of temperature and hence the distribution must be very sharply peaked so that uh, we would not make so much of you know mistake if we still consider microcanonical ensemble and say that the energy of the system is really confined in a thin shell which is what we have done earlier. Let us just see one more um, small point here which will tell you that uh, indeed the two distributions are same and uh, even when we go to grand canonical things do not change much. So, let us um, expand L n of P e ok, P e is the, the canonical uh, distribution uh, about this value that is about E equal to E star which is nothing but equal to U ok. So, uh, if you uh, do that expansion, so log of P e um, which is equal to log of uh, E to the power minus beta E multiplied by the density of states and this uh, we uh, do the expansion the expansion will give you a beta u uh, plus s over k. Uh, this is the first term. So, we do a Taylor expansion of this and the Taylor expansion uh, just to remind you that it is equal to f of x naught plus del f del x at x equal to x naught into x minus x naught. So, the first term is uh, f of x naught which is written here um, and uh, we have replaced E star by uh, u and plus half of uh, del 2 del E 2 uh, and uh, the first term um, is uh, absent because of the reason that uh, this uh, is an equilibrium distribution. So, the first term goes to 0 and the only non-zero term that is there is del 2 f del x 2 um, x equal to x 0 x minus x 0 square ok. And we have shown that uh, earlier that the first derivative vanishes because uh, it gives you an extremum condition. So, the uh, first non-zero term is the second term which is here and this is equal to log of uh, e to the power minus beta e g of e uh, and uh, this is evaluated at e equal to u and e minus u uh, square ok. So, multiplied by that ok. So, it will be here. Now, um, this uh, as you see that it is like a constant let us call it as some um, say 1 over alpha and uh, why we write 1 over alpha would be clear soon this is a constant as well 
okay and uh, there is some constant and then it is uh, multiplied by e minus u square. So, uh, this distribution actually looks like uh, a Gaussian distribution. So, log of uh, p e is equal to some constant value which is minus beta uh, u minus t s just that uh, taking the beta out. Um, so, the k goes away from there and you get a t s here and a minus uh, 1 over alpha um, and uh, you have a e minus u whole square and then of course, there are terms which we have neglected. Okay. So, so this tells you that uh, the p of e which is nothing but uh, this e to the power minus beta e g of e and um, this is equal to uh, e to the power minus beta u minus t s and e to the power minus uh, alpha uh, e minus u whole square. Okay. Let me write with a square bracket here. Okay. So, this is the distribution, this is a constant, this is a Gaussian. Okay this exponential minus alpha x square and this is what was claimed that this is like a bell shaped distribution with uh, the mean uh, uh, is at u. Uh, so, it is the mean is of course, at u as you can see that it is like a term which is like exponential minus alpha x minus x 0 square. So, uh, this has a mean at E equal to or E equal to u or which means x equal to x 0 and the width of the distribution what I mean by width is that uh, it is called full width at half maximum or the second moment is um, at uh, 1 over alpha where alpha is a uh, constant which you can you know calculate by calculating uh, you know this uh, double derivative of this uh, distribution log of the distribution. All right, so uh, this uh, reconfirms that uh, the distribution that we are dealing with in the canonical uh, ensemble or the canonical distribution is indeed a sharply peaked distribution, which has the most probable uh, value is equal to the average value, and it's uh, peaked about the average value, and it has a width which is um, uh, like 1 over alpha here which can be obtained from this uh, calculating the double derivative of the log of the, uh, the probability. Okay. So, let us um, do one more thing. Uh, the whole purpose of doing this is to convince that uh, the statistical mechanics we learn a number of ensembles but they really uh, do not give you results which are uh, significantly different than each other. And we should be happy about that because if you take a representation or if you take an ensemble or if you take a distribution which produces completely different results, uh, then uh, that does not serve any purpose. Then we have to revisit that what our assumptions are because uh, for the thermodynamic quantities which are the final goals of our uh, of these doing statistical mechanics they cannot uh, vary. So, we should uh, in, in the limiting case we should get all these distributions to give us um, same result or something very similar. Okay. Uh, let us do the fluctuations in energy and this is going to teach us again something important. So, fluctuations in energy means uh, the, uh, the energy uh, this of our system which is E r and this uh, the average value of E r etcetera these are um, you know there are fluctuations because uh, there are statistical fluctuations and in these measurements and these uh, statistical fluctuations are important to calculate and the final result that we uh, get tells you that in the thermodynamic limit that is as the number of uh, copies 
or number of uh, members of the ensemble they go to infinity this fluctuations die out which uh, tells you that uh, the statistical mechanics that we do or the statistical description that we undertake for a given problem uh, makes sense and it is correct. So, what we mean by fluctuations uh, a priori it, it means that we are trying to calculate this quantity and uh, which is nothing but um, E r square average minus E r average square. Okay. Um, you might see that uh, some uh, books actually write it as E r square average with a bar and E r bar we may have also done that, but they mean the same thing that putting a bar and putting um, a sort of angular bracket they mean the same thing we are just trying to calculate the statistical average. Let us see what that comes out. So, if we have to calculate this as a fluctuation, so fluctuations in energy means we have to calculate these quantity delta E r okay, or, or the square of that does not matter. So, um, so, we have to individually calculate E r average and E r square average and so on and so forth. So, we have already uh, calculated this, this is E r exponential minus beta E r and sum over r exponential minus beta E r. Okay. This is a general definition for any um, thermodynamic average or any statistical average or average of any statistical quantity that we want to calculate. So, E r is the energy of our system you weighted by the Boltzmann factor and uh, divided by the total probability or this is the partition function. And um, you see how you get a E r here you can simply get it by taking a derivative with respect to uh, beta. So, if you take a derivative of this quantity uh, so del del beta of uh, e to the power minus beta E r. Uh, and this will give you a minus E r uh, e to the power minus beta E r okay? uh, and then you absorb the minus sign say you put a minus here then you get a plus here and so on and so forth. So, uh, this is a trick that is uh, widely used there in order to uh, write these averages in a sort of closed and nicer form. So, this can be written as a minus del del beta of uh, log of z okay, and this is nothing but equal to uh, u that is the internal energy and um, you see that uh, z is equal to e to the power minus beta e r sum over r. If you take a log of that log of z is equal to sum over r minus uh, I mean log of uh, this uh, e to the power minus beta e r and now you take a del del beta of log z you get exactly what you there because uh, the log will make it go down. So, there will be a term which is exponential minus beta E r and then there will be a sum here uh, this one is not required and there will be a sum here which will have a E r exponential minus beta E r and that is what you exactly want. So, uh, learn this well, so that uh, this is the average energy and which we call as the, uh, the internal energy of the system. Okay. So, u is the internal energy. All right. So, uh, now how do we calculate this quantity? which is uh, E r minus E r uh, square and then the square of that uh, I mean sorry the square should come uh, outside yes here. Okay. So, this is nothing but equal to E r square minus E r square E r average square. So, this is equal to delta E r square and so we have to calculate each one of them as I have said earlier. 
So, we already have calculated the last one that is uh, ER average uh, which is here. Uh, we just have to calculate ER square and it is not difficult to see that if you have to get 2 powers uh, of ER that is 2 factors of ER, uh, you have to do a double derivative of this uh, log Z uh, with respect to beta. So, uh, this is nothing but equal to ER uh, square minus E r average square is equal to 1 by z. Uh, this is just writing it completely. Uh, I mean the expression I am sort of uh, from the first principles and minus 1 over z uh, there is a sum over r e r uh, e to the power minus beta E r uh, whole square. Okay. So, this is uh, this uh, the first term that is E r square average and this is E r average and then you take a square of that. All right. So, um, now uh, let us look at an identity which is del del beta of 1 over z del z del beta if you look at that, then it becomes equal to 1 by z, keep the first term constant and uh, differentiate the second one and uh, this is 1 over z square del z del beta square okay? and that is exactly what you have. So, this is equal to uh, the first term is uh, this term is this term and this is this term. So, your E r delta E r square which is this quantity, um, let us write it with a bracket, uh, this is delta E r square okay. this is equal to del del beta of 1 by z del z del beta. Okay. I hope this is clear. Um, we have just uh, look at this expression, uh, this expression that is written in the middle and then uh, del r square is equal to uh, del e r square equal to del del beta of uh, 1 by z del z del beta. Now, I have to take a derivative. So, we have again 2 terms inside the square bracket 1 over z and del z del beta and we can do it simply by uh, doing a del del beta of log z and this is nothing but minus del del beta of E r average. That is what we said del del beta of log z is a minus of uh, del del beta I mean a minus del del beta log z is equal to E r average. So, this E delta E r square is minus del del beta of E r okay. and uh, E r is nothing but um, uh, we know that it is u that is the internal energy and this is del u del beta and uh, uh, what we can do is that we can calculate this as uh, a minus <coughs> del u del t and del t del beta and uh, beta equal to 1 over k t. So, del beta del t is equal to minus 1 over k t square. So, uh, you have del beta del t. So, this can be inverted as just minus k t square the minus sign goes away and we get is it as k t square del u del t and this is nothing but n k uh, t square and uh, the specific heat del u del t specific heat there is no rhyme or reason that we should uh, consider it as uh, at a constant volume, but let me still write it as C v just to uh, sort of make sure that this is the specific heat it uh, even if it is not at uh, constant volume we can still write it as simply C. So, you could uh, go ahead and write it as C just uh, for uh, concreteness I will write it as C v. Um, and so, this is equal to n k 
uh, t square because uh, this del u del t gives you a n c v. So, you have a k t square and c v and uh, so that tells you that this quantity um, delta e r square is equal to some proportional to some t square and it is uh, the scale is set by uh, the specific heat. So, um, if we uh, want to calculate the uh, mean fluctuation or the relative fluctuation, Uh, then what we do is that we uh, calculate this E r square average minus E r average square uh, divided by this half uh, and by this E r and this is nothing but root over of n k t square C v and divided by n um, u. I am writing it specifically by introducing uh, or rather this writing this uh, internal energy as an extensive quantity. So, u is equal to n into small u, so capital N into small u. Okay. So, uh, that is how you do it and uh, if you look at this, this has a 1 by root over of n. So, which means as n tends to infinity, the delta E r uh, by uh, e r. So, this quantity delta e r by e r average that goes to 0. Okay. So, which means that the fluctuations vanish and uh, that is how um, the statistical mechanics works so well. It gives you uh, accurate results or close to uh, the correct result uh, because the fluctuations uh, vanish. Uh, in the limit of uh, large n. Okay. And um, there is another small point here which you uh, may find it useful in some context that is uh, now this delta E r square um, is uh, greater than 0 for sure. I mean all these quantities are positive and uh, this delta E r uh, square rather because it is a square of the fluctuation uh, this has to be necessarily greater than 0 and if you go back then you will see that this is like del 2 del beta 2 uh, log of z uh, that is greater than 0. So, this uh, this proportional to this del 2 del beta 2 log of z. Uh, now, that tells that um, the log of z is actually um, has a positive curvature. in the beta space. So, in the inverse temperature space uh, this log of z has a positive curvature because uh, del 2 del beta 2 is uh, talks about a curvature of a system. All right. So, uh, this establishes an important point that this is really uh, you know a statistical mechanics works so nicely because the number of particles uh, or the number of ensembles uh, is very large and you take an or average over all these ensembles. Um, to uh, sort of bring an analogy with again with your uh, the students and marks and so on and so forth, if there is a class that consists of a small number of students, the statistical analysis will uh, lead to erroneous results. Uh, which means that if you like if you are very small students the notion of you know the standard deviation or the variance etcetera will uh, not be very well defined. Whereas, this is much more well defined when you have a very large distribution and you get a bell shaped or a Gaussian uh, curve uh, in the distribution of marks. So, uh, how do we uh, extend this discussion? We are continuously talking about this. Uh, uh, this PR which is the, the distribution, the canonical distribution and uh, getting various information out of it. 
and uh, let us uh, do that uh, or rather continue doing that and let us calculate what is the entropy. And uh, entropy is nothing but uh, minus k t log z which is what we have derived earlier. So, this is minus 1 over beta log z and this is equal to minus 1 over beta uh, log of summation over r exponential minus beta e r and this is nothing but equal to minus 1 over beta log z. Okay. So, this is a simple expression uh, we can calculate if we know the partition function we can calculate uh, this free energy Helmholtz free energy and the entropy is obtained as uh, minus del f del t um, at a constant uh, number of particles and volume and this will tell us that this is equal to nothing but k um, and a beta square. There is a little bit of algebra that I do please uh, convince yourself that this is correct and this is equal to k log z uh, and uh, k uh, beta over z and sum over r e r exponential minus beta e r. So, that is the expression for entropy and um, uh, so, uh, again using the distribution, so this is nothing but uh, 1 over z e to the power minus beta e r. Uh, so, that tells you that a z p r is equal to exponential minus beta e r. Okay. So, this is one thing. So, if you want to know let us just uh, see this one more time. This del f del beta that you see here it is equal to minus 1 over beta square log z uh, minus 1 by beta z uh, del z del beta. And now you can uh, get this expression that you see there. Okay. So, uh, this is uh, uh, z p r equal to exponential minus beta e r. So, minus beta e r uh, that is equal to um, log of z p r. So, minus beta e r is uh, this quantity and so s is equal to which is uh, k log z the first term uh, there and uh, the second term can be written as k over z sum over r and um, so uh, this is um, minus uh, log of uh, z p r uh, e to the power minus beta e r and so on. Okay. And uh, so, this is uh, this simple to find and this is k log z uh, minus sum over r uh, k by z uh, log z uh, into z p r and minus k uh, r uh, p r log p r. Uh, p r is given here. So, this is your p r okay. and this z will cancel and uh, we have uh, this quantity. Uh, uh, so, so, this the first two quantities cancel in the following sense uh, that there is a, a k log z uh, and a sum over r p r and there is a k uh, sum over r p r log of p r. Now, this sum over p r is equal to 1. So, this is a k log z minus k log z they cancel and we get entropy to be equal to minus k as p r uh, summation over r p r log p r. This is an important quantity. So, we get the, the entropy directly from the distribution. So, it is uh, minus k uh, summation over r uh, p r let me write it neatly p r log of p r. Okay. It is a useful uh, quantity and uh, we will use it in order to calculate the entropy directly from the distribution. Now, this also uh, help us to uh, reaffirm our understanding that uh, 
both the microcanonical and the canonical would give us uh, same result. And uh, in, uh, in microcanonical distribution, we have a p r to be equal to a constant, which is what we have said. And let us call this constant as some 1 over omega, where omega denotes the number of accessible states, the number of microstates, so to say. Okay. Uh, so, s gives you um, minus k and sum over, uh, we we'll, we'll just sum over omega now. Uh, and it is 1 over omega because p r is 1 over omega and there is a log of um, uh, p r which is uh, 1 over omega. Okay. Uh, this quantity uh, is log of 1 over omega is equal to log 1 minus log omega, uh, log 1 is 0. So, this is just simply minus log of omega. So, the minus sign is uh, goes away and we have a minus k um, sum over omega 1 over omega uh, and uh, minus log of omega. So, this minus sign becomes a plus sign. Okay. So, this is the expression for entropy and uh, this is uh, inside the sum, but then every term is a constant. So, if you sum over omega, you simply multiply it by uh, omega that is number of uh, accessible states that you are summing up on. So, this is k 1 over omega log of omega into omega. Uh, so, this uh, sum is replaced by this omega because there are omega number of terms and they cancel is equal to k log omega and something that we have saw earlier. So, this is a entropy which is k log uh, number of microstates and then we have derived it um, from the canonical distribution as well. So, whose expression is s equal to minus k uh, p r log p r, where p r is a distribution which is 1 over z exponential minus beta e r. Let us uh, do one example that we have already done, so that uh, this understanding will be uh, you know complete there. So, this example is this uh, n um, non interacting spin half particles in a magnetic field. So, the energy of the system is written as uh, minus mu 0 h and uh, there is uh, there are n of them. So, let us call this a sigma j. Um, well, I mean sigma j can take values plus 1 or minus 1 uh, j equal to 1 to n and we are directly writing the energy, but you can write down the Hamiltonian of a system whose uh, energy would be uh, given by this things. Because now, um, everything is like a quantity that we know. So, for all these j equal to 1 to n. Okay. So, sigma j takes these uh, discrete values that is it is a plus 1 or minus 1. Uh, and uh, so, again uh, in the micro canonical ensemble, we have taken n such spins and we have assumed that uh, n1 are pointing up, n2 are pointing down and we have written down the energy, total energy and the total number of particles and have calculated the number of microstates by simply taking a n factorial divided by n 1 factorial and n 2 factorial, which gives the number of the total number of microstates present with out of n particles n 1 have the possibility of uh, I mean uh, n 1 are pointing in the up direction, which means has a value plus 1 and n 2 are pointing in the downward direction having a value minus 1. Now, we will use uh, canonical ensemble to solve the problem. Okay. So, the canonical partition function, now this is very important because 
we have not uh, said yet that how to calculate that sum. So, this is the sum that we need to calculate and uh, uh, look at this that we will simply write it as sigma j uh, and exponential minus beta uh, and then we will write it as mu 0 h and a sigma j. Uh, there is a j equal to 1 to n and uh, so it looks a little complicated to begin with uh, because uh, so there is a plus sign because you have a minus sign here and a minus sign here. So, this should be plus ok. All right. So, uh, let me write it a little uh, more familiar fashion because you are seeing uh, uh, sum in the exponent as well let us uh, and which is true which would be there I just write it as exponential beta mu naught h sum over j equal to 1 to n sigma j. There is a double sum there one sum is outside which tells us that we should sum over two possibilities of sigma j either it takes a value plus 1 and minus 1 and we add both the possibilities. So, this sum is to take into account the, uh, the sigma j equal to plus minus 1. However, when you see inside the bracket there is another sum and this sum actually have uh, sigma j and now we have to sum over all the spins taking this value sigma equal to sigma j equal to uh, plus 1 or minus 1 for each j. So, um, there is a tentativeness whether uh, we can calculate this uh, both the sums in a closed form and it turns out that it actually is very easy to do it if you uh, write this as now uh, uh, you can make this ornamental things that this is a, actually a function of n and v and it is at a given temperature t. So, you can write it as n v and t I am simply writing it as z at this moment. So, this is equal to uh, so, a bracket and I am doing it for the first spin and I will write it as exponential um, beta mu 0 h. So, this magnetic field is h in a magnetic field h. So, beta mu 0 h uh, this is 1 the second term will be a sigma 2 that is the second spin again I will write exponential beta mu 0 h and I will write down this and for all the spins and this is for sigma n exponential uh, beta mu 0 h. So, I see that uh, this uh, double sum really factorizes and makes life easy. and is easy to calculate ok. How do we calculate this? Uh, before that let me write then this z is equal to rather z is equal to each one of the terms. So, let me write it as z 1 and to the power n because there are multiplication of such n terms. So, I only have to calculate z 1 that is one of the square brackets and I will be fine because um, I just raise it to the power n because all these terms give us identical results ok. And uh, z 1 that is any uh, one of them is sigma equal to plus minus 1 and we have an exponential uh, beta mu 0 h sigma ok. So, each one of the terms uh, look like this. Uh, and uh, this is like um, exponential beta mu 0 h uh, plus exponential minus beta mu 0 h. You see sigma equal to plus 1 gives you this term and sigma equal to minus 1 gives you this term and this is nothing but 2 cosine hyperbolic beta mu 0 h ok and uh, this cosine hyperbolic is a function that uh, you may not have come across so uh, frequently, uh, but they are there in a large number of uh, places in physics. 
in the uh, particularly in statistical mechanics. And let me also write this sin hyperbolic x which is exponential x minus exponential minus x by 2 and we also write which we which will need tan hyperbolic x which is exponential x minus exponential minus x divided by exponential x plus exponential minus x basically nothing but sin hyperbolic x and cos hyperbolic uh, divided by cos hyperbolic x. So, uh, we get a nice um, and closed form for this and uh, then uh, calculating the total partition function becomes easy. So, this z is equal to z 1 to the power n which is 2 to the power n and cos hyperbolic um, beta mu 0 h whole to the power n. Okay. Uh, but uh, really uh, it is not um, this n uh, we do not have to worry about because uh, as soon as we are going to take a log of z in order to calculate f the Helmholtz free energy the n comes out as a prefactor and then we can you know talk about uh, free energy per particle say small f and be done with this, uh, this capital N. So, f uh, is equal to uh, let us call it uh, f is equal to uh, or rather uh, which is minus k t log z and from there we calculate a f which is f over n which is a minus uh, k t log of cos hyperbolic uh, let me uh, make this apparent the temperature dependence by replacing mu by 1 over k t. So, that is the free energy per particle and similarly entropy per particle. You can keep the capital N also there is no uh, problem, but it is just that it is sort of carrying uh, that N over and over again uh, does not make sense. So, we just talk about per particle per particle means here what we mean is that per spin. So, this is equal to um, small s okay, which is s over n this is equal to a del f del t uh, at a given h with a minus sign I should not miss the minus sign because uh, this is an important quantity. So, this if you uh, calculate s uh, you just have to uh, you have a log of this cos hyperbolic and the t is there in the denominator of the argument of cosine hyperbolic, but it is not difficult to do it you can um, you can just practice it and get it. So, it is 2 cosine hyperbolic uh, mu 0 h by k t. Uh, one term comes from the log uh, of this and then the other term is uh, mu 0 h by k t tan hyperbolic mu 0 h by k t. So, that is the entropy per particle and um, uh, the magnetization the other important quantity in this context is the magnetization per particle. which is given by m equal to minus del f uh, this has to be a small f del h. Uh, let me make sure that I have written a small uh, f there yes. I uh, will come back uh, in a moment with this entropy one more time, uh, but at this moment it is uh, the calculation of the magnetization at a given temperature which uh, just do it carefully you will get it as mu 0 uh, tan hyperbolic uh, mu 0 h by k t and this result is identical as the micro canonical result. If you go a few lectures back and see that the result for this spins by calculating this n factorial divided by n 1 factorial and n 2 factorial take the log of that use Stirling's formula and get the 
entropy and then uh, get the magnetization, it is exactly the same which means that this really looks like uh, I mean it goes through 0. Okay. So, this is like the uh, mu 0 h and this is the minus mu 0 h. So, this m uh, as a function of uh, I mean we will write it as mu 0 h by k t and so on. Okay. Now, um, we have some more discussion here especially with the entropy and um, uh, this uh, will be done in a while uh, and uh, we want to discuss what is called as negative temperature and um, uh, which we will uh, do later, but let me um, you know uh, sort of uh, calculate uh, another uh, quantity which is measured in experiment called as the magnetic susceptibility. and magnetic susceptibility is written as a T H and this is really a del M del H um, at a given um, temperature and in the limit uh, you know H tending to 0. So, for very small fields. Um, so, this is equal to mu 0 square H. So, I take this, um, this expression of M and then take a derivative with respect to H. It is inside the tan hyperbolic. So, first you take a derivative of tan hyperbolic and then what is there inside. So, this gives you a sec hyperbolic square and uh, so this is k t and uh, this is a sec hyperbolic square uh, mu 0 h by k t. Sec hyperbolic square is nothing but 1 by cos hyperbolic square. So, you have seen cos hyperbolic uh, as uh, cos hyperbolic x as e to the power x plus e to the power minus x by 2. Um, so, you may want to explore that what happens at a small x or large x in the sense that truly this result is valid for large temperature because we are talking about classical systems. So, um, if we talk about very low temperature we may get wrong results. In fact, it gives you wrong results uh, as we can uh, just see it here. So, at h equal to 0, uh, we can get this as um, you know uh, I mean uh, this chi goes as uh, uh, I mean h tending to 0 rather h tending to 0 uh, chi of uh, T h tending to 0 gives you this uh, mu 0 uh, square h by uh, k t and this is a famous uh, formula called as a Curie's formula where the paramagnetic susceptibility at uh, large temperature goes as 1 over t. And as I said that this is really important to understand that this mu h by k t is small here uh, is much smaller than 1 and in this limit this is true and uh, that tells you that we actually need to either the cos hyperbolic or the sec hyperbolic we need to expand and uh, say I will just give you this hint that cos hyperbolic for small x uh, for small x you can expand it and you get 1 plus x plus 1 uh, minus x divided by 2. So, this becomes equal to 1. So, the sec hyperbolic also becomes equal to 1 and that is how you get this uh, prefactor out and which uh, looks like 1 over t. Now, chi of t um, let us just write without that h going to 0 is like 1 over t which is called as a Curie's law. Okay. So, uh, once again we make this comment that valid for uh, large temperature. Now, two important things. One is that uh, that we have uh, made a one to one correspondence with the micro canonical ensemble and uh, calculated the magnetization uh, which looks exactly same 
and then we have calculated the susceptibility we um, recovered Curie's law which it should which is valid for you know uh, n independent spins uh, in a magnetic field and the large temperature behavior of that of the susceptibility goes as 1 over t. So, we will stop here and uh, continue with uh, more discussions on this and it is very important to uh, make a comment on uh, negative temperature which we will do in the following class. Thank you. Thank you.